for action is right now. We have the summer months happening with the, the spawn of the fish and also the migrating of the birds. And this webbing that's laying abandoned along the shoreline are actually a big threat whether they survive or not, not to mention our salmon that are spawning. I'm looking for sponsors like you to come aboard with me and to really focus on what's needed. Let's break this down into small steps so that everybody's focused and we're working towards the same direction. And that's removing this derelict gear. King 5 TV recently broadcast just one example of us in the habitat working together as a team removing this derelict gear. And at many times we had big trucks with cables pulling the netting right out of the habitat. Ghost nets, not a figment of the imagination, but devices actually floating out in the ocean and along our coastline, trapping and killing all kinds of animals. A few weeks ago, we showed you dramatic pictures of the damage ghost nets are causing our environment. Well, tonight, King Fly's Deborah Feldman shows us an effort now underway to get rid of at least a few of these things. These men spend much of their lives in and around the water. But today, they're not reeling fish in. Instead, they're volunteering their time and energy to keep them free. The important thing is just to get it out of here. <laughs> their mission here is to cut loose and dispose of several large commercial fishing nets recently discovered on a tidal flat. Probably the easiest way to go about this, at least in my experience, is just to take a pair of scissors and just... A local sport fisherman, a Dale Temke, found them. These nets, the most important thing here is that we have endangered fish, and as these fish migrate into the habitat, this is stopping our endangered fish. Educating the public about these abandoned nets, many call them ghost nets, is one of Temke's passions. He's documented some of his finds, including this net that trapped and killed seals, otter, and seabirds. This video helped him convince a diverse group to join him in getting rid of at least a few of the nets he's found. I'm getting there, John. <laughs> Many are members of the Kitsap County Pogi Club, a group of recreational fishermen. I don't want to get my hand in there. <laughs> yeah. The men are armed only with scissors and knives. Can you imagine a critter in here? And a good dose of determination. Knife the sport fishermen are joined by members of the Audubon Society, representatives of nearby fishing tribes, even a fish and wildlife officer to monitor all the activity. It can be an enforcement nightmare because generally abandoned nets are unmarked and uh, they're hard to determine whose nets they are. The volunteer perhaps most affected by this experience is Kevin George, a member of the Suquamish tribe and a fisherman who used gill nets like this one for several years. That's why I'm here, is because I know the magnitude. I've traveled all over and I've been everywhere fishing and, you know, I've seen the devastation and I've seen these nets everywhere. And it's really appalling. Hey, hey look at this! The work is hard. It takes nearly a dozen men to cut the tangled net from the abandoned barge. Come on, big fish! <laughs> we got it! Further down the beach is another net. This one is smaller, but it looks a lot more deadly. <laughs> Disgusting. Repulsive. This net is full of decomposing fish and sea life. We have a survivor in the net. CPR, quick. The men do what they can, cutting free a few crabs still clinging to life. There we go. We've saved a critter. Unlike the bigger net, this one has a buoy still attached with the name of its owner written on it. We'll contact this individual, hopefully through the tribe, and, and uh, see if we can't find out what happened here. I have not witnessed something as awful. I think it's such a sad commentary that these things happen. It doesn't matter where the source is. That shouldn't happen. See what we got here. The sight of these nets is depressing, but Kevin George is leaving this spot feeling hopeful for the first time in a long time. It really feels good. It really does, knowing that, you know, that we, we're making an effort. And it's not just any one individual. We have a consortium of people here that represent a lot of different folks. 
People with differing backgrounds, but a common goal. All together agreeing on, let's get this stuff out of the water. On Puget Sound, Deborah Feldman, King 5 News. Will you help to support us for future projects? Good people make good things happen. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you soon. This is an important issue. Every day, birds are getting trapped in these nets. It's a serious issue out here. Together, we can make a difference. I'm going to get this boat in the water, find some of these nets.